Hello everyone, my name is Brianna Peppers, this is my Sims 2 channel. I am going to be posting videos from my gameplay, mostly probably going to be this Uber hood that I have now built. I do not currently have a microphone, so if that my audio is a little bit off, uh, do not worry, I am going to work on that. And my videos will only improve with age, or at least that's the goal, right? So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be going through a small little, well, I say small and little, but it's going to be a run through of each family and where they currently are in my Uber hood. So as you can see right now, we are in Pleasant View. Uh, this is the main part of the hood. I just went ahead and added Strangetown and Veronaville as subhoods, and I also do have a downtown district as well with some Sims living there. <clears throat> So we are just going to go through down my list. I have a list I confer when I am playing the game to see in what order I need to go. And so first we're going to go take a look at Mortimer and Bella. Okay, so this is the exterior of the goth house. Every time I leave a household, I put the roof up so that when I come in, it's like I'm going back into the dollhouse, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah. In this household, we have Mortimer and Bella, who are currently sleeping. Um, Mortimer, as you can see, is about to expire. He's 75 days old. He probably only has one, maybe two days left, but judging by that lifespan bar, Friday will be his last day. So this is Bella. Um, she is old. <laughs> she just aged up to an elder, whereas Mortimer is on the brink of extinction so here she is I did not know what to do with her um, I just brought her back had her remarry Mortimer because it didn't make sense to me to have them not be married however she is a romance sim and so she is happiest when she's courting and you know flirting with others so she has added quite a few people to her uh, little black book one of those being of course her ex-son-in-law, Don Lothario. Yes, Don and Cassandra were briefly married, they are no longer. It was not until after the marriage ended that Bella and Don began a illicit relationship. Right now she is furious with him because he was on a date with the Sim on a community lot and she saw them and did not like that. However, she's a romance Sim and I use ACR so she shouldn't have jealousy. And then of course we have Daniel Pleasant because how could he not? Daniel Pleasant in my game is quite a scoundrel. And we have Rip Grunt, which is kind of an unusual thing, but with them both being romance sims, it just made sense, and Rip is no stranger uh, to liking older women, so that was his angle. And then of course, she's involved with Mortimer. So I can't wait to see what she gets up to after he passes, because she'll have full reign of the house, and she will not have to uh, sneak around and hide her affairs from anybody. Um, they also adopted a little puppy named Max. He's cute. Um, he's going to turn into a big dog today, so I'll come back and show you guys what he looks like in episode two. Okay, next, we are going to go check in on the Caliente family, aka the Curious family. I need to use SimPE to change the household name for this particular family. 6 a.m. so it's still a little dark here in this household. Um, as you can see they stayed in the Caliente condo. They did not move out. You might be wondering, well Brianna, what on earth were you thinking having Nina Caliente get married, much less to Vidkind Curious? And I'll tell you, it was not part of the plan. Um, it just so happened that Nina and Vidkind began seeing each other and I thought he was just going to be another one of her, um, like, you know, conquests uh, and then she got pregnant like pretty easily and I was very shocked because this is probably the first time ever in my gameplay that Nina has had a baby with someone other than Dawn I really cannot remember the last time if ever she's had a child with someone that was not Dawn 
Something strange in my game currently is uh, I have disappearing and reappearing relationships, which is probably a sign of corruption. Well, I say probably, but it's definitely a sign of corruption. The thing is, I'm just not super concerned about it. I'll deal with it when it happens, and eventually if the superhood ever becomes completely unplayable, I'll get to start all over, and I never really mind doing that, even though it sucks to lose that um, hood or you know work I've put into all of it. But it's always fun to start over with the pre-mates. All right, so we're just taking a look at Nina's relationships. Also, I want to say she is not naked. She's wearing her underwear. Um, so, of course, she is married to Vidkin. They have pretty good chemistry. It's medium or so, two bolts. Um, and then, of course, she is also um, in love with Daniel, who she is currently having an affair on Vidkin with Daniel. Um, General Buzz Grunt from Strange Town, she is in love with him. I don't think they were originally having an affair. She was actually seeing General Buzz before she met Vidkin, or before they got married, that is. Um, of course, I was gonna just let that relationship expire, and then Nina said no way, and she started up with him again. Of course, General Buzz is now married, so we'll see if he decides to continue that affair. We have Consort Cat, which is a whole long story that I will get to when we get to Veronaville. Um, and then she did, I believe, have a crush on Loki Beaker, and then they were talking on the phone one night after Vidkind had gone to work, and she lost the crush, so maybe she wasn't quite feeling it with him, um, probably because he's hideous, but that's just my opinion. Alright, and then of course we have Vidkind over here, um, it's hard to, it's hard to see him, I think he looks super cute without his glasses, um, I also really like the hair that I chose for Nina with the bangs. They're, it's a nice touch, in my opinion. So, yeah, you're probably wondering now, who were these kids over here? Well, over here we have an alien, so you can it's safe to assume. This is Orion Curious. I kind of, you know, go back and forth on how I like to pronounce her name. Uh, Orion is the alien daughter of Vidkind, so when he gets abducted, right at the start when you first begin playing Strange Town, Orion is the product of that. And so I have the multiple pollination technician mod and so her mother is, or I should say her pollinator, was Karina Beetle. So she does not have the same pollinator as Vidkin's alien niece Astrid. Um, actually I can see here Astrid's pollination technician is not showing because she was the original, or she had the original pollination technician. Just a little family lore for you. I really like Orion already. She's a fortune sim. Um, she likes uh, other aliens and she likes people with red hair. She is straight, so she's going to probably wind up finding a boyfriend before not too much longer. As you can see, the only person she has chemistry with is Orlando Sintowski, and they don't quite like each other all that much. So that's all right. And then over here is probably one of my favorite little Sims, and I'm sure he's gonna grow up to be quite an interesting little guy. This is Levi Curious. He is Nina and Vidkin's son. This is who Nina was pregnant with whenever she and Vidkin decided to get married. He does wear glasses, um, as you can see in his little, dis uh, what are these called? Pictures? Portraits, it's in his little portrait down here. Um, he is a Virgo, so he's very neat, very shy. I believe he is going to grow up to be a, um, hold on, let me check my notes here. He's a Virgo, so he's going to grow up to be a knowledge sim exactly like his dad. I really like this for him. He's adorable. And then we also have a puppy in this household. This is Susie. I can't quite get a good shot of her. She's down there. I love the dogs in this game. All right, um, also I just wanted to show you that I did do a little makeover of the house. Uh, just they were earning more money and I didn't really feel like moving them out to a bigger house, at least not until maybe if Nina happens to have any more kids. She is getting on up there in age. She becomes an elder in only 18 days. I am using a custom lifespan mod, or not a mod, but I made a custom lifespan with SimPE. So uh, some of the ages might seem a little weird if you're not used to that. Um, so yeah, this is the house and Nina Vidkind, even though Nina is, you know, having affairs here and there, I feel like she does truly love him. Next up on the rotation is Don Lothario, who is still living directly next door to Nina. 
something I was hinting on earlier when I said I have a weird disappearing relationship thing is that for some reason now Don and Nina no longer know each other. I don't really remember if maybe Nina caught him cheating and she was upset with him at some point, but I know that in Don's relationship panel Nina was showing he's in love with her but they're not friends and I forgot to go through in detail but as you probably saw in uh, Nina's relationship panel she did not have a relationship with him at all like he just wasn't there because if he was they probably would have been more towards the top I'm actually again I'm pretty surprised that Don and Nina do not have the strongest chemistry it's just one of the rare few times that it doesn't work out for them in my game. So this is Don Lothario. He's only 15 days away from becoming an elder. I did mention earlier he had a failed marriage to Cassandra Goth. Uh, they had two children before they wound up divorcing. His children are Christopher and Jonathan, respectively. Christopher is the older one. Jonathan is younger. Christopher is very close to becoming a teenager, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, they both live with their mother and her new family. Um, we can see he has dabbled with quite a few people here. Uh, Bella Goth, namely, who we already spoke on. We have a townie named Rose, a townie named Christy. He has very high chemistry with Nicole Mace, who is the town slob. His relationship panel just moved around as if someone's here. But no one's here. So, Don did temporarily live in the goth home with Cassandra and his children when they were married. But, of course, when he when they divorced, he got some money back because Cassandra did not have him sign a prenup. That is why Don is so rich. Truthfully, it's just because I have a No 20 King Handout mod, so when Don moved out of the house, it gave him an automatic portion of the goth household funds, and I did not care enough to change it, and I feel like Cassandra would be the naive person who would forget to have her new husband sign a prenup. So he did take some of their fortune, not too much though, they're still fine. And I moved him back into his old condo. Nothing about it has changed at all. Of course, when I came back, the furniture was all gone, so I redecorated it, to my knowledge, the best I could. I have been playing this game for a very long time, so I am pretty familiar with the layout of Don's house. The only thing is I did add a stove, because why the hell didn't he have a stove to begin with? I'll never know. Yeah, so this is Don Lothario, and you pretty much already know everything there is to know about him. He has two children with Cassandra, and I'm honestly shocked that he hasn't had any more since then. Um, funny, if, so I think she was in here. Um, so he is currently, you know, dabbling with a lot of romantic interests, but one of them is Olive Spectre, the evil witch who resides in Strangetown. Um, it's going to be quite interesting to see where that relationship goes because, you know, if you know anything about Olive, you might know that she has a little garden out back of her house and not many people make it out of their life. Next on the rotation is going to be the Dreamers. So look at this super cute family portrait. So a couple of the families, which I don't think I talked about a minute ago, uh, was I have changed their family bios. So over here for the Goth family bio, I said Mortimer and Bella now find themselves with an empty nest because all of their kids have moved out. Will they find a way to fill their time productively or will they find their seemingly perfect marriage a tad too boring? And I kind of put that in there for myself because I also just find that playing with only elder can be quite boring um, so now that Mortimer is gonna die maybe I'll find something interesting to do with Bella or what I'm thinking is more likely Alexander and his uh, fiance Lucy Burb are currently in college so whenever they finish and graduate I'm thinking they're just gonna move into the manor so that he inherits it once Bella passes um, also over here, we, for the Curious family, we have Nina seems to have settled down and is embracing suburban life. How long until she gets bored of pretending to be the perfect wife and mother? So I wrote this a while ago, so she has already gotten bored, as you can tell from her couple of affairs that she's having. Um, for the longest time, she wasn't having any affairs. Dawn doesn't have a bio. And here we have Darren moved on and is now happily married to Kristen. What adventures will the newlyweds get up to? So Kristen is actually Kristen Lost from the Singles Family. If you ever play Strange Town and you move the Singles Family in, her maiden name is Lost. She and Darren had a 
instant connection when they first met. I don't remember how they met. It's been a while. They dated for a very long time. It wasn't until the last couple of rounds or so where they decided to get married because Darren autonomously proposed to Kristen. And uh, it also wasn't until last round that they decided to have a baby. I don't know why Kristen's face looks like this. She's uh, studying hard. So Kristen is in the medical career. She is currently a specialist. Well, with her being a fortune sim, the only ones she ever rolls practically are to gain skill points and buy things because she wants to move on up in her career because the more she moves up, the more money she makes. As you can see, I have not changed or done anything with the house at all. I have been meaning to redecorate because I can't stand it. I find it rather fugly. Um, I have remodeled it in the past in different saves before and I always can never really find out what I want to do with it. So I've just left it alone. Kristen's just saving up her money so that they can do something to it. Um, Darren's over here in the bed. Darren actually has given up on his dreams of being a successful artist, so he mostly just paints as a hobby, and he's now gotten a job in the oceanography career. It wasn't really until he met Kristen that he decided to go ahead and get this real job, because what with him being a knowledge sim, I find that he's always had the desire to earn skill points and, you know, put his life towards a, like, a, a, a goal to, if I, uh, can't think of anything else to say. It's it's nice to have something to work towards. And what with him now being the father of another very small person. Um, this is baby, what is her name? Delaney. This is Delaney Dreamer. So Delaney is uh, super cute. She has her mother's skin tone. She has her father's black hair and dark blue eyes. Uh, she is the only other child that Darren has. So Dirk is currently off at college. No, I take it back. <laughs> I forgot where I was. Dirk is now uh, an adult and he is married and has a wife of his own. So we're going to see them shortly. And Delaney just pooped her pants. Okay. Um, so something about this you might be wondering, well, Brianna, if Cassandra is not married to Don, why isn't she married to Darren? Isn't that the most popular thing to do? And you would be correct. It is the most popular thing to do. Here's exactly what happened. What happened with Darren and Cassandra is that as soon as she divorced Don, she was still pregnant with his second child. Jonathan wasn't even born yet. And Cassandra came over and visited Darren when it was his turn in the round. And they got to kissing, cuddling, they both fell in love, it was wonderful. But of course at that time Darren was already involved with Kristen, this one here. And when Kristen was over another night, he autonomously proposed to her because of a mod I use. So I took that to kind of mean Darren has moved on from, you know, pining over Cassandra, even though she was now into him, and he was still, you know, in love with her. It was almost like too little too late. He realized he spent a lot of his life, you know, pining over her, um, and how he and Kristen actually have a lot more in common than he and Cassandra do, because truly, like, what do he and Cassandra have in common other than the fact that they wear glasses? So, I couldn't think of anything else. <laughs> Next on the rotation is going to be the Pleasants, which is quickly becoming some of my favorites. Uh, we have Mary Sue, and as you can see, there's no Daniel. Mary Sue and Daniel have divorced, so she is now Mary Sue Oldie again. Fresh out of her divorce, Mary Sue now finds herself alone with three kids. Will she be able to balance motherhood with her career aspirations, or will she have to choose one over the other? So, as you can see, she's still trying to climb her way up in the politics career. Uh, we're going to go in here and take a look at who her children are. I have had people ask me before if I simply aged down or kept Angela and Lilith as teens, and the answer is no. I actually had a super fun experience with ACR. The very first night that you play the game, you know, the game wants you to have Daniel cheat on Mary Sue with Kaylin, and he did, but he did not get caught at first, and so he and Mary Sue were still uh, doing the do, and they had gotten pregnant, and it was during Mary Sue's first pregnancy that she caught 
Daniel with Kaylin. She forgave him, they continued being married, and then she caught them together again. And that's when she said, you know what, I'm absolutely finished with you. If you can't tell, I, f I quit all of my saves uh, while the Sims are sleeping. <laughs> that's why all these Sims have been in bed. Um, but yeah, so Mary Sue said, I'm absolutely finished with you. They divorced, um, and then that, of course, left Mary Sue alone with the three kids in this house. So over here, this is um, Grace Pleasant. She was the firstborn of the second pair of twins that Daniel and Mary Sue had. I think it's super cute. I absolutely love that they had another set of twins, and they were both sets of redheaded twin girls. So this is Grace pleasant. She is a knowledge sim. I just think she is adorable. She strikes me as like the preppier, like maybe not quite a know-it-all type, but a very self-educated uh, girl. She seems like the type that would definitely speak out against people who are trying to oppress her. Um, she is a Pisces. She is uh, got a pretty good, like, personality. I really enjoy when my sims are more on the nice side because they get along better with others. And since I use ACR, I used that to determine her gender preference. And she is bisexual, so she likes boys and girls. Um, the only people she currently has chemistry with is Ezra Broke, Ivy Cooper, and Ariel Cap. We'll talk more about the Brokes and the Caps once we move on to that part of the hood. And then over here we have Grace's twin sister, Iris. So this is Iris. I tried to keep it, oop, hello. I tried to keep it with a naming theme of something like one is good and one's a little more like not bad per se, but I think Angela and Lilith and Grace and Iris match in some capacity. So Iris is a popularity sim, just like her two older sisters and her father. Oh wait, no, her father's a romance sim, but you know what I mean. And she is uh, also bisexual, so she also likes boys and girls. Um, and her turn-ons are fit, fit sims with black hair, and she doesn't like young adults. But so here's a funny story about Iris really quickly, is she was just at her uh, niece's little uh, birthday party. She has a niece, uh, Alice, who we'll talk about soon. Um, and she was there with some of Dustin and Angela's friends, one of those friends being Johnny Smith. And she and Johnny kissed. And I find this to be very strange. Like, I do have, like, teen and adult romantic interactions enabled because I like my sims to be able to continue to be in a romantic relationship with their significant other if they had just aged up to adult and the other one is about to. I never expected to have my sims autonomously flirt and kiss and possibly, who knows, do other things with teens. So I'm going to have to think about if I want to keep that in my game. But it does provide us with interesting stories. So Iris has already had her very first kiss with a fully grown adult man who is married and has a child. So I'm a little concerned for her, but hopefully she starts making some better decisions. Moving on down here in this very much Harry Potter uh, cupboard under the stairs bedroom. Sorry, Noah. This is Noah Pleasant. Uh, he is... <laughs> really not happy about having to do his homework, I guess. I need a screenshot of this, especially the floating pen. Um, so Noah is the last born child between Mary Sue and Daniel. Uh, he had just been born, I believe, when they split up. Yeah, so he was uh, a baby or, or, yeah, I think he was an infant, if not a toddler already, when they broke up. So he doesn't really know a life that ever included Daniel and Mary Sue in the same home. Grace and Iris, of course, were a little bit older, but I don't think any of them took it too badly. If anything, they're more excited because now they get two Christmases or something like that. So, yeah, this is Noah. Something that I just really love how it worked out in my game is the fact, like I said earlier, Mary Sue and Daniel had two sets of twin red-headed girls, and then the only son that they ever have together looks like Mary Sue. Uh, he has Daniel's green eyes, of course. Um, Noah is an Aries, which is a future popularity sim, if I'm not mistaken. I do use, like, the Maxis intended zodiac, um, sign for aspirations because I find it's just easier. Um, I got it off of Pleasant Sims' website, and I've learned that since then she has changed it, so I'm not sure if I'm going off of her updated one or her old one, but 
alas, I like it. I think it works for me. It takes the decision making off of my hands. So, he is uh, going to be a future popularity sim as an Aries. So, popularity sim genes really run in this household. So, not much else going on for Mary Sue. Uh, she is still just a level 5 city council member in the politics career. So, she's trying to work her way up, but she's getting kind of older. Um, of course, I know with if you live in America, you might be familiar with the fact that a lot of old people are in politics. So, she still is in the prime of her time. Um, she is currently in a romantic endeavor with Kenneth Bertino, who was just a random townie. As soon as she and Daniel Pleasant divorced, she went out on the town to see if she could pick somebody up, and she found this guy. And so ever since, they just kind of woohoo whenever she's feeling like it. You might can see here that she and Daniel are still in love. So what happened was as soon as they divorced, Mary Sue rolled the wand to uh, apologize to Daniel, even though he should have been the one apologizing to her, of course but that's just how I feel. Oopsie. Oh, okay. Um, but so one apology led to another and then they fell back in love. They've been woohooing and stuff. Um, so I feel like Mary Sue still doesn't want him back. She doesn't want to marry him, especially now that they've divorced. It would be even stranger for their status or appearance if they were to get back together, right? So she's happy just letting him go be doing his own thing. Um, and she just kind of acts on that relationship again whenever she feels like it. Honestly, I quite like Mary Sue in this save. I always found her to be a little boring in the past, but this Mary Sue has really given me some flavor. All right, so that's pretty much it. Oh, and also we do have a cat in this household, a kitten. This is Milo, so he is very tiny and very cute. I love him already. They just adopted him. And again, I haven't done anything really to change the house, except I uh, have remodeled a little bit. They got quite a big inheritance once their grandfather, Herb Oldie, has passed away. And so I used that to change the looks of the girls' bedrooms. Um, I, I like Grace's room a lot more because she's got like this shelf situation going on. I'm not much for like clutter. Uh, I, I don't usually download it because I find that it's just... I'm not the best at decorating anyway, but you know, it's cute. And then I did uh, remodel the bathroom a little bit to make it look more like it's shared between two teenage girls. Okay, so that is it for the Pleasants. So we're gonna move on. Coming up next on the rotation is gonna be the Burb family. So we are all familiar with the Burbs, right? So as you can see here, they have had two children past Lucy. They, this is Kylie and this is Tally. Uh, their bio currently reads, John and Jennifer have been enjoying their suburban lives. Jennifer is just about tapped out with babies, but John still wants to grow his brood. Will the two of them be able to compromise? So as of at this very moment, at least the last I saw when I finished them in this round, John actually had the simultaneous want and fear of having a baby. So it's like he wants more kids, but on the more realistic side, he realizes they don't really have the time, the money, or the room for another baby. So I, I just moved them into this little weird boxy house that's right across from the Goths. So they are neighbors. Um, there is not much to say about the exterior, but I did renovate the inside entirely. So it has a completely different layout. This is the only house in probably my entire Uberhood that I've done this with because I usually just cannot be bothered to re remodel, redecorate. I'm not very good at it anyway. So um, obviously first up we have Jennifer Burb, who she, I really like her. Well, with her uh, having a high interest in fashion, I tried to keep her with this like moderately cool, um, and like, but also momish enough outfit. Um, she's very cute. She is a paralegal in the law career. She's level five and she's just steadily moving on up. She would be a lot higher in her career if she hadn't had to take so much time off between both of her pregnancies. And over here we have John who is just getting out of bed in his indie wear. So this hair is a little odd on him, but I can't really find anything else that I want him to have. So, oh, you see how like it's it's peeking 
his scalp. I forget like which style this is, but I need to go and delete all of them because they aren't very good, but I will do that another time. So yeah, this is John Burr. Um, not much to say about him. Oh, he, he fears having a baby, so I feel like he's probably been talking with Jennifer and she said absolutely not, and so he's like, okay, you're right, three kids is enough. Um, and he is a waiter, a level five in the culinary career. Funny story about John and the culinary career, he rolled the wand to get this job when I first started playing them. I gave it to him, he worked there for a while, and then he had the desire to quit right about the time that Kylie was a toddler. Um, and Tally was about to be born. And so I had him quit because I was like, oh, that'd be cute to have him be a little stay-at-home dad. And then he immediately rolled the wand to get his job in the culinary career back. So I said, he just was decided like maybe he didn't have enough money. They didn't have enough money to just only have one income. So that's what he did. Over here we have Kylie Burb in her very goth room. Um, she's not quite ready to wake up yet, but I just love her. Um, so Kylie is uh, the second born child. So you know there's Lucy and then there's Kylie. She is an Aquarius, which means she's going to be a family sim. Uh, well, she already is a family sim, you know. Um, she's uh, a little sloppy, a little shy. She's more on the active and playful side, and she's pretty nice. Mostly. Uh, this is what led me to think, like, hmm, I feel like she would definitely be, she's thinking about, like, going to jail. Um, she would definitely be on the more emo side, probably. I like her a lot. And also, Kylie is bisexual, so she currently has a thing for Ariel Cap. Alright, so my mouse did just die, so my uh, controls are going to be a little funky from here on out. I'm going to pause quickly. And then just over here we have uh, Tally Burb. So let's get you to stop playing with that toy so we can get a good look at you. So Tally is blonde. She is uh, the first blonde, actually, uh, in the family. So I, I, if I remember correctly, she gets this from John's side of the family. So Tally is a, where is her personality? Also an Aquarius. So I know it's not firstborn syndrome because they don't look alike and their personality is a little bit different, but look how almost identical they are, personality wise. Like, of course, looks wise, they uh, have different skin tones, different hair colors. I think they also have different eye colors, but isn't that funny? So. Uh, they're, all of John and Jennifer's kids are going to be family sims because Lucy's a family sim and so are Kylie and Tally. I also tried to keep it with the whole naming thing, like it, you know, it ends with an E, sort of, or at least an E sound. So Lucy ends with the Y, but Kylie and Tally end with an E and an I, respectively. This is also used to be Lucy's room, but I renovated it a little bit to match uh, Tally's favorite color, which is pink. So if you also saw here on Jennifer's once panel, because I will talk about this, she rolled the wand to flirt with Dawn after they became best friends at Bella Goth's birthday party, um, which is just really funny to me. And so I'm hoping that next time I come here to play them, I'll get the chance to have her act on that wand because I would love for it to be a little messy because what is The Sims 2 without mess? Alright guys, so I am going to go ahead and cut this off here. I am nowhere even close to being done with introducing you to my Uberhood families. I still have quite a few to get through in Pleasant View alone before I move on to the subhoods. So please stay tuned to see that coming out shortly, and I will get that out as soon as I possibly can. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good one. Bye!